Hey there guys, I'm Heidi with a and Home Church. Welcome back to Sing Nancy by Randy Alcorn. We are on day 38. Um, sorry again, yesterday got cut short. I am hiding out in my room. Kids are hopefully occupied for right now. Our week is really off to a hectic start, you guys. And I was really hoping I was feeling a lot better than I was last week, and I don't think I am. So we are going to try to press through so we can at least dive into this. Because of course, every day, you guys, I think the study has been such a blessing. I know I am immensely enjoying it um, and praying you guys are as well. Um, make sure you subscribe and tap the little bell icon so that way you get all of these videos that come out Monday through Friday. And then, um, of course, Wednesday, which is when you will be seeing this, we will be doing our um, Wednesday evening service back again in our home church group and on the band app. Um, so those things are linked down below. Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when those will live stream. Um, a time to come together in fellowship, um, in prayer, and um, I believe we're going to do like a Q&A teaching topic type type thing is I'm pretty sure what my husband is planning to do. Um, he has been also struggling. He has a condition in his neck and he has been in immense pain for the past few weeks. So um, keep him in your prayers if you guys think of him. So right on topic for today, day 38, giving our burdens to him. Many hear God say, do more, not I've done it for you, rest. Yet Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Sometimes in moments of pride, we need to fear God and repent. Other times in moments of brokenness and despair, we need to just bathe in his grace and see his smile and hear him say, well done, enter into the joy of your master. Right? We see that in Matthew 25 verses 21 and 23. We're told to cast our cares on him because he cares for us in 1 Peter 5, 7. And to come to him, he will give us peace. See John 14, 27. I learned years ago that I have to say no to the great majority of things I'm asked to do. So I'm available to say yes to those few God wants me to do. Guys, remember that. I know this was a huge one for me um, a few years back when I was in the midst of my girl boss mess that I had found myself into. And um, somebody brought up the point of, you know, for every yes to one thing is a no to other things. So we need to make our yeses count, right? So let's read that again, because I think that's very, very important for us to stop and remember. And I feel like with the world kind of being somewhat shut down, we're refocusing on these things a little bit. I learned years ago that I have to say no to the great majority of things I'm asked to do. So I'm available to say yes to those few God wants me to do. Jesus calls upon us to carry our crosses, yet paradoxically, it promises a light burden and rest for our souls. If the burden feels heavy and our souls aren't at rest, maybe we've picked up more than he intended us to carry, or we haven't fully come to him. Many think they hear God say, do more and do better, but not, I've done it for you, rest. Yet this is what Jesus meant when he said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That was Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. We see in Psalm 55, 22, Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Psalm 62, 1 says, For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth said, I'm convinced that one of the major reasons we can't handle the demands of day-to-day -day living is that our spirits are weary. Our souls need to be restored. The restoration of our souls is a ministry of our great shepherd. If I don't take time to get my spiritual tank refilled, I soon find myself running on fumes. Paul Tripp said, the eternal rest of the gospel is this. God's affection for you isn't rooted in your performance but in Christ. It's amazing. Let's go ahead and turn on the blog epm.org forward slash enjoying rest. Um, and this is a blog post that Randy did enjoying rest now and in the life to come. So it says here, look at that with that hammock picture. I don't know. Some of you might've seen, I shared a picture on Instagram. I went to the grocery store uh, a few weeks ago and they had this very fancy, adorable macrame, like chair hammock hanger thing. 
Um, and it was so pretty. And I sent a picture. Well, I think I posted a picture on Instagram and I said, Hey guys, tell my husband if he wants to get me anything. Um, jokingly because it was priced at a ridiculous price there at the grocery store. But my husband found a hammock chair on Amazon for like a fourth of the price that that one was. It was very inexpensive. Um, and he ordered it for me and it will be here on Saturday. So when I saw that little hammock picture, I was like, you know what, Lord, you have my attention. I am listening today and my hammock chair is on the way. So I will happily <laughs> enjoy some, some rest because I think I need it. All right, so the article here says, when God created the world, he rested on the seventh day, right? We see that in Genesis 2, 2. That's the basis for the biblical Sabbath, when all people and animals rested. In the biblical Sabbath, we see there in Exodus 20, verses 9 through 11. God set aside days and weeks of rest, and he even rested the earth itself every seventh year. Leviticus 25, 4 through 5. When you're reading through, especially the Old Testament, when you're reading through all of the, the regulations and the instructions for the Jewish people, you do, you see lots of rest. That's why we kind of joke, the more we learned about the biblical holy days over the holidays, we said, well, heck, why don't we want to do these things? Number one, they're truly all about Jesus, not like our made up, we try to slap Jesus on our reasons. And two, it's a lot of eating and resting and just enjoying and being together as a family and, and worshiping the Lord. Like what's not to love? This is the rest we can anticipate on the new earth. Times of joyful praise and relaxed fellowship. Amen. Our lives in heaven will include rest. We see that in Hebrews 4, verses 1 through 11, if you want to pull up that whole chunk. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. That's Revelation 14, 13. Eden is a picture of rest, work that's meaningful and enjoyable, abundant food, a beautiful environment, unhindered friendship with God and other people and even the animals. Even with Eden's restful perfection, one day was set aside for special rest and worship. Work will be refreshing on the new earth, yet regular rest will be built into our lives. Part of our inability to appreciate heaven as a place of rest relates to our failure to enter into a weekly day of rest now. By rarely turning attention from our responsibilities, we fail to anticipate our coming deliverance from the curse to a full rest. I think that's huge. Hebrews 4.11 says, make every effort to enter that rest. It's ironic that it takes such effort to set aside time for rest. Isn't that funny how that works out? But it does. For me and for many of us, it's difficult to guard our schedules, but it's worth it. The day of rest points us to heaven and to Jesus who said, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest, right? In Matthew 11.28. What feels better than putting your head down on a pillow after a hard day's work? How about what it will feel like after a hard life's work? It's good to sit back and have a glass of iced tea, feel the sun on your face, or tilt back in your recliner and close your eyes. It's good to have nothing to do but read a good book or take the dog for a walk or listen to your favorite music and tell God how grateful you are for his kindness. Rest is good. So good that God built it into his creation and his law. I know in just conversations we've had, there are many of us, myself included in this lot, it really struggle to understand the importance and value of rest and to be able to truly enter into it and enjoy it without feeling guilty or like we should be busy. We should be doing something like we're, we're somehow less valuable if we're resting. Some people thrive on social interaction. Others are exhausted by it. Some love solitude. Others don't. On the new earth, we'll likely all welcome the lively company of others, but also crave times of restful solitude. We'll enjoy both. We catch glimpses of being able to enjoy both work and rest at once. I used to feel this when body, mind, and the beauty around me sometimes kicked in on a 10-mile run. I've experienced the same thing bicycling when I felt I could ride forever and the pedaling I was doing was part of a great rest. I can be working intently at something I love yet find the work restful and refreshing. Remember too, I've, I've said that some people ask, they get really goofed up by the whole idea of Sabbath and it's like, well, I can't just do nothing all day. Like that's not enjoyable to me. Well, yeah, some days my day of rest, my, my Sabbath day, 
the weather is perfect outside. It's beautiful. I am, I go out and I tinker in my garden and I find a great time of, of worship and refreshment and, and, and just rest in that, even though it's physically doing something, I'm, I'm doing something as a, at leisure I'm doing something in a, a very special, you know, it's just a, it's a different, it's a different pace and mindset. And it can be definitely an act of, of, of worship and time with the Lord and a time of rest from your regular duties. God rested on the seventh day before sin entered the world. He prescribed rest for sinless Adam and Eve, and he prescribed it for those under the curse of sin. Regular rest will be part of the life to come in the new universe. Wouldn't it be wise to learn how to rest now? So that is his article there. Um, I think that was fantastic. At the bottom of this, there are some additional resources linked for um, his different heaven series and stuff. For those of you I know that are enjoying really digging in and learning more about um, scripture and what it has to say about heaven and the new earth to come. So that is all on there. All right. Rest, guys given your burdens to the Lord. Where are we at? How are we doing? Is this something that you, you do good and you do put the effort and work toward, or is it something that you don't? I know for me, this really not feeling well is definitely helping me out. Um, look at these things and evaluate these things for myself because, um, my body just feels worn down lately. And, uh, I guess if I wasn't listening to all of the other, um, warning signs that God was putting off, he'll say, fine, then I'll wear you down. <laughs> That'll get your attention. So I'm excited you guys come and join us over. You can comment here on the video or come over to the Facebook group. And I post every day the study questions from the study PDF so we can share um, our responses on there. I love seeing your guys' responses. Uh, more of you come and join in, share them. Um, but otherwise, we'll see you guys for service tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time here on Wednesday. And uh, yeah, then back again on Sunday service. But otherwise, we'll be back here with the next day, Lord willing. Bye, guys.